All right, guys, welcome back to the next video. In this video, we're going to be um, making our custom Windows image. Uh, what I did from the previous tutorial, we have a uh, client Windows 10 Enterprise uh, build. I've gone ahead and installed it on a new virtual machine. And now that we're on this initial setup screen, what we're going to do is we're going to click into the virtual machine and we're going to hit Control Shift F3. That's going to launch us into audit mode. Audit mode is essentially a place that you can get to in Windows before you set it up initially. It will log you in as the local administrator and you can make any kind of changes you want to the operating system. What this will allow us to do is essentially install some software, maybe keep some files, maybe make some changes to the backgrounds, stuff like that. Customizations that you want to do uh, for your uh, deployment. What I usually do is install some web browsers, maybe like Notepad++, uh, and run Windows Update. So at every, every time that I deploy a computer, I don't have to sit for an hour waiting for Windows to update. Now you can see here we've already loaded into uh, audit mode. We're just going to click out of the network screen and we're going to keep this window open. If you close out of the sysprep tool, it's easy to get it back, no problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a very basic thing and uh, run Windows updates and uh, we'll be back. All right, now we're back. Uh, the updates have been installed on the computer, and in the meantime, while that was happening, I've installed Google Chrome, and I've installed Notepad++. Uh, should be there somewhere. Um, yeah, it's there. Anyways, uh, as you can see, Windows is telling us that we need to restart the computer to finish uh, updates. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And when you're in audit mode and you restart the computer, it will go back to audit mode automatically. No action that you need to take. So I'll go ahead and restart it now. Okay, it looks like the computer has restarted and we're back in audit mode. And um, like I said, I installed two applications, installed all Windows updates that were available. And I also just for fun uh, added this uh, text file here just so we'll see that it is in fact coming back when we do a sys sysprep. So if you've uh, accidentally closed out of the uh, sysprep tool, that's okay. What you do, just open up a command prompt. And when you're in the system32 folder, just do um, a change directory into sysprep and run sysprep.exe if you want the uh, graphical user interface. You can also do it through command line switches, but for the sake of this video, we'll just do it like this. Now. We have a couple of actions that we can take here. We can either uh, enter audit mode again, which we won't in this case. What we need to do, since we're going to be setting this up like a, for a brand new installation, we're going to enter the OOBE mode, the out of the box experience mode. Generalize means that it will remove all traces of the profile that we had, and it will basically make it and uh, make it a real out of the box experience. And after this task is done, what we want to do is we want to shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. You'll see uh, that the tool is going to start running in a minute here. And once it's done, the uh, computer will automatically shut down. OK, now that the computer has finalized the sysprep process and it's shut down, now what we need to do is we need to capture the image. What this essentially means is it takes the hard drive that is it takes the drive and it converts all that Windows installation into a Win, uh, into a WIM file. You remember the WIM files from the uh, Windows Deployment Services video? That's what we're going to be creating. There's two ways to create these WIM files and I'll show you both ways. The first way it's going to be more of the manual way. Uh, <clears throat> the second way is much easier and uh, we'll do it through WDS. But let's go ahead and set it up the hard way first so you can see how it works. First things first is we're going to need to either uh, use a network share to store the WIM or store it onto a second hard drive. What I'm going to be doing uh, now is I'm going to be storing it on a second hard drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the SCSI controller. We're going to add a new hard drive. I'm going to make it a dynamic you know, disk. It doesn't really matter here. You could just call it... Um, It literally doesn't matter. Just call it whatever you want. Just make sure that the disk is uh, going to be is going to have enough so uh, space for your WIM file. A default WIM file is about four gigs. 
If you're installing updates, if you're installing software, make sure you account for that. I'm, I usually tend to stick to a 20 gig disk um, because I don't install a whole lot of software inside of the image, um, but 20, 20 gigs should be safe. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that to finish. We're gonna apply that change. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add another uh, SCSI controller for the uh, DVD. Now we're gonna uh, mount a Windows PE uh, image. You can make your own Windows PE. Uh, it's free, you just have to follow some guides online. Um, and then we're gonna need to boot to that, uh, whoops, we're gonna need to boot to that Windows PE disk. So I'll go ahead and uh, select that DVD drive here at the beginning. And Windows PE stands for pre-installation environment. It's basically just a command uh, line interface like this. It's basically a terminal. Uh, I took mine, I customized it a little bit. I added this thing called Explorer Plus Plus so I can get a UI like File Explorer, you know, but this is pretty much what it is. So next thing we're gonna do, we're, just gonna, we're gonna open up disk part to view our disks. Just type in list disk. You'll see that we have uh, two disks. Uh, disk zero is gonna be the operating system disk and disk one is the new disk that we just created to store that WIM file. So let's go ahead and select the first disk, the operating system disk. Okay, and when you list the partitions, you'll see that there is the last partition, the primary is the largest, it's the 19 gigs. That's the one that we're gonna wanna capture. So let's go ahead and select the partition four, and we're gonna assign it a letter, like a drive letter. Okay, now we're gonna select disk one, there's uh, no partitions. Uh, makes sense because we actually have to, it's a clean disk with nothing on it. What we need to do is now we need to create some partitions. So let's create I'm basically creating a primary partition, assigning that uh, to NTFS. Uh, actually, then we probably need to select it. It's telling us that it is, and then now we will assign it. Great. Now that we have mount point A assigned to the operating system disk and mount point B assigned to the empty disk, we're now going to go ahead and um, create the WIM file. So to create the WIM file, we have to use this command DISM and just follow along. We're going to do capture image. Should we spell everything right? Okay, so we're giving it the capture image flag. The image file is where that WIM file is going to be living. Like I said, we've mounted B to the uh, new disk that's empty. We're capturing the partition or the disk A. We're giving it the name Windows 10 Custom, and you'll see where that comes in. And I like to also add the flag for compress max to make sure our WIM file is the smallest uh, possible. So now we're going to go ahead and press enter, and we're going to wait for this to capture. It takes anywhere between uh, 10 uh, to 15 or more minutes, depending on how much stuff you put into your image and depending on how large uh, your image is. It's going to give you a progress bar, so just make sure you follow along with that, and we'll be back once it's done. All right, so the image has uh, successfully been uh, exported to a WIM. So now what we need to do is with this uh, client uh, VM, we just need to turn it off. There's nothing else that it's really going to do for us. Turning it off unmounts that second disk that we created. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mount that WIM file into WDS so then we can install it. So back on our deployment machine, we're going to go ahead and uh, sign in. We're going to go into the settings. We're going to add a hard drive. And we're going to browse to that disk that we created earlier. Uh, I called it Windows Storage. so. Uh, there it is. Let's go ahead and apply that change. And then we should be able to pull it up 
on this uh, computer here. All right, so there we go. There's that install.wim file that we created earlier. Uh, now what we're gonna do is go back into WDS. We're going to add an install image and we're gonna follow that disk, install.wim. And let's see what the name is. Remember when we gave it that name flag? This is what it this is what it looks like right here. So uh, it looks like Windows 10 custom. So we're just gonna leave that as is, and we're gonna import that into WDS. While that's happening, we're gonna go back to our client machine. We're gonna change the boot settings to boot from the network adapter. And we're gonna just wait a little bit until this is done. Okay, looks like it's done. So now we're gonna boot it up and uh, make sure that we, right. So uh, one thing I forgot to do, since both of these virtual machines have that uh, new disk mounted or attached, it's currently in use on one VM that's on and it's not, in, so it's trying to access it, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna just remove that drive because we don't really need it from here and let's boot it again. So once this gets an IP address, we're going to press enter. And you'll see that that Windows 10 custom is going to be listed here. And when we install it, you'll see what happens. So I'll just go through the steps here real quick while this is, while this is loading. All right. And you see Windows 10 custom that we created. So let's go ahead, go through next. And we're going to just wipe out everything that uh, we did earlier. You can test this on a new VM, you can snapshot, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but here we go. I'm gonna install it and uh, I'll be back when, once it's done. All right, so Windows just finished installing on the uh, with the new image, so let's just go through the settings. We're not gonna go into audit mode since we're not creating a new image, we're just making sure that it works. Uh, I like to uncheck all this stuff. Even for a test, uh, we're gonna delete Okay, so I'm gonna actually pause this while I go through and type in the uh, username and password. Actually, never mind. All right, uh, now I'm gonna pause it because this part usually takes a while. All right, so the uh, logon process is finishing here. And as you can see on first logon, we're seeing the message that updates were installed because um, that's what we did in our last image. Uh, let's see, Notepad++ is here. Google Chrome is here. And let's see. And there's the file. So as you can see, we custom made our own Windows image. Uh, we exported it using the complicated method uh, and uh, it's working. One thing I did forget to mention, however, is when I create uh, my own Windows images and I install Windows updates, I usually like to run a uh, cleanup command that makes, uh, it basically compacts the size of the updates so we're not able to restore back from those updates, but that will make the WIM a little bit smaller. I'll put that command into the YouTube uh, description. Just make sure to run that command before you do the uh, out-of-the-box experience in SysPrep. All right, now that you saw the easy, the hard way to uh, capture an image, I'm gonna show you a way that's slightly easier. What I've done is I've taken the uh, operating system that we installed, I sysprepped it again, because it won't work if the image isn't sysprepped. So I uh, sysprepped and shut down the VM. We're gonna go to our WDS machine uh, that disk that we mounted here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that install.wim file. Uh, not necessary for us anymore. I'm going to go under Disk Manager, and I'm also going to remove this disk from the VM. Okay, so I've made it, I've uh, disabled the disk, and now I'm just going to physically remove it. Okay, now uh, we're going to use the client machine to capture the image again. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna need to add that disk back. So we're gonna to go to back to our SCSI controller, we're gonna add the hard drive, uh, called it Windows Storage. Okay, and then we're gonna make sure that uh, we're gonna, the network adapter is the first boot option because we're going to be booting to it. Now we're gonna go back to our deployment uh, virtual machine with WDS installed. We're gonna view our boot images. 
If, you, if you've been following along, you only have one boot image. If you have multiple, just make sure you select the one that you use the most. We're going to right click on it and select Create Capture Image. The Capture Image is basically a visual representation of doing what we did manually. Uh, we're going to call this Capture Image. And the location and file name is just a place where you can uh, store the WIM file that this is going to generate. I'm going to throw it to the root of the C drive. You can place it wherever you want. Okay, and then we're just going to select Next, and we're going to wait for this to finish. All right, now after that process is done, you're going to view this screen, and we're going to check the box to add the image to the Windows deployment server uh, automatically. It's going to automatically select that Capture WIM that we specified in the last dialog, and I'm just going to call it Capture Image. Okay, now after that's done, uh, feel free to do what you want with your uh, WIM file. You can delete it, you could store it, uh, it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to go back to the client machine. Remember, it's set to network boot, and it has the second hard drive that we're going to be storing this image on. We're going to power it on, and we're going to pixie boot it. Here you see that we have the two boot files, the setup and the capture. We're going to go to the capture. All right, and here we're going to click through the prompts. If you've successfully sysprepped your disk and it's attached to this virtual machine, it's going to show up automatically here. If this volume to capture dropdown is blank, you have not sysprepped your OS. Make sure you go back, sysprep, shut down, and try this again. So we're going to select C. We're going to call this Windows uh, 10 Custom uh, Capture. Give it some sort of description. Now, this is asking us where we, where we want to save this image, and this is where that second disk that we attached comes in handy. We're going to find that local disk D, and we're going to call it here uh, install.wim, and save. I'm assuming if you have uh, a network share, you can save it like that as well. I haven't done it here just because it's easier to show uh, using a second, like a, using a second disk, but I'm sure you can do it through a network share. There's a checkbox here to upload the image to a Windows deployment server. Uh, if you want, we're let's see, let's see if that works actually. Whoops, that's probably not going to work. Didn't spell it right. Okay, so since I spelled it wrong, uh, it's clearly not going to work, so lab deploy one uh, should work, and it's going to prompt us for uh, credentials. Okay, and you can see that the uh, two groups, client and server, are coming up. Those are the two groups that we have here. The reason it asks you uh, to store it locally too is, in, is uh, ensures the image is not corrupted if there is a network malfunction. So uh, it's going to save it into two places for us. We're going to create the WIM file and it's going to automatically upload it to our WDS server. So let's select next. Uh, it's saying that that image already exists. So, so let's call it something else, Win 10 custom. Okay, uh, there you go. So now it's doing all the work that the uh, tool in the command line uh, did for us, but it's a little easier because we can just click through it and we're able to see a user interface. So I'm going to pause the video while this uh, captures and then we'll be back once it's done. All right, looks like uh, this is reporting that the operation is complete. So let's go back to WDS and we'll uh, refresh. If we pull up the client, Windows 10 custom capture. That's exactly what we specified here, and it looks like it's now imported into WDS. So we'll select finish, and the machine will likely reboot. So what I'm going to do is just uh, turn it off. Actually, let's not even turn it off. Let's let's boot into that Windows 10 ca uh, custom capture. Let's see if it works. So we're on the uh, source screen here. I'm going to select Windows setup. And um, I'll go through the install process and report back. All right, so uh, I just finished installing the image 
uh, that we captured with WDS. And it uh, looks like we're back. There's Google Chrome, Notepad. Everything is there and everything worked. Okay, so in this video, I went over the basics of how to create a custom Windows image in uh, Windows Audit Mode. I showed you how to capture that image using uh, the manual method with Windows PE and the command line. And I've also showed you how to create a capture image within WDS and how to capture that uh, using those tools. Now in the next video, we're going to extend our deployment tools by installing MDT and configuring a custom, a few custom applications. Okay. Thank you for watching.